France select a stacked team to take on the inexperienced Wallabies. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. France for Australia, this one is in the Stade France in Paris. It's on Sunday 27th of August and kickoff is at 4.45 BST. Okay, so let's have a look at the two teams. We're going to start with the home team, France. So as, as I said in the intro, this is just absolutely stacked. Front row is Gross, Marchand and Antonio. You know, all kind of frontline players for them there. Marchand. You know, he's got to be up there among the best hookers in the world. I put him, you know, next to, I think, in that category, you got to have Sheehan, you got to have Marks, and you got to get him. I think those are probably the three best hookers in the world that you can argue all day about which order to put them in. Antonio is just a massive human being. And then, you know, Gross is a you know, decent scrummager, good around the park as well. Into the second row, then. You know, you get Flamand and Vilmsa there. You know, probably, you know, you could argue about Wokey coming in, but probably, you know, starting second row for them when they go to the World Cup. Flamand, I thought, had an excellent uh, Six Nations, you know, with Wokey out. And, you know, Vilmsa, he's shown what he could do before. He brings a lot of grunt into the team. On the back row, then we got Kroos, Aldrit, and Olivon. So I thought Aldrit was exceptional last time out. Olivon and Kroos, you know, what you're going to get with them as well. It's just a quality, quality back row. And then, you know, as we talk about, you know, this guy, Dupont, and not in talk about quality, like there's just nobody, I think, on his level, seriously, like over sustained periods of times, other players. You know, they get up there, maybe just get a little bit higher than them for maybe a season or so, but over an extended period of time, it's very hard to argue about him being, you know, the best player around at the moment. Beside him, then you got Jalabar with Entomac out. So, you know, Jalabar and, um, you know, Astoy may be battling out for the, the starting number 10 jersey. So Jalabar has a chance to show why he should get the gig. Onto the wings then, we got Villiers and Pernod. You know, two exceptional wingers, both in great form. And, you know, both, both can just make things happen as well. You know, and, you know, no slouches in defence either. I was very surprised that Eden de Mortier didn't actually make it into the World Cup squad because I thought he had a fantastic Six Nations that he would be the guy putting pressure on these guys. But Biel Biari has emerged and he's putting these guys under pressure as well. So with that much pressure, not just from the World Cup squad, but outside the World Cup squad with such an exceptional young talent waiting out there as well to, to come in, so these guys know that they have to deliver. Into the centres then, we've got Dante and Fiku. Fiku, you know, probably the best uh, in Form 13 in the world. At the minute, you know, you have a few others who would uh, certainly dispute that, or at least people would dispute it on their behalf. But again, kind of like Marshawn, Fiku has to be in that conversation. If you're not including him in, you're not, you're not being fair. Uh, to the players that you are actually talking about. Dante is such a threat at the breakdown and you know he can carry he can carry uh the ball into contact hard and, and win yards after after you know the initial tackle as well. You got Ramos at full back there coming back in. So accurate from the tee and I think he's gonna be a big part of France's World Cup. On the bench then we've got uh Maubaca you know, uh, as the backup hooker. Then we have Sebastian Taufi Fanua and Aldahiri, so some really good deputies on the bench there as well. Then we have Romain Taufi Fanua and Woki there. So, you know, uh, Taufi Fanua probably going to come on in the second row. Woki could be second row or back row. Then you get uh, Bowden there as well, um, who could come on in the back row, row too. So you're basically going for a 6-2 split. You got uh, Coulon 
who you know, could come on and cover a number of positions, and Chamine as well, who come on and cover a no- number of positions. I expect he might come on for Ramos, though, you know, maybe with about 15 minutes or so left of the game. So that is the France team, as I said, just absolutely stacked, they're full of quality. And when you look at the players that they have on their standby list outside of their 33 that they've selected for the World Cup, you just see how much depth they've built over the last few years. Next, let's have a look at the Wallabies team. So front row, you got Angus Bell, Dave Parecki, and Tanila Tupo. So, you know, a pretty decent front row there. Gone are the days when the Wallabies scrum was, you know, all you had to do was basically not fall over at the initial engagement and you would win a penalty against them. Like, they've completely changed that in, you know, over the last kind of decade or so. But still, you would worry about them just the, the sheer size of that French front row. But still, you know, uh, Bell and Tupo, they're, they're decent scrummers, decent around the park as well. Gorecki, I think he, he had a bit of a knock right in one of the warm games. So it's good to see him back in the front line there as well. Second row then looks like it's, it's the preferred um, combination for Eddie Jones. Richie Arnold and Will Skelton. You know, Arnold is um, an able uh, partner for Skelton. He has looked probably the best of the partners that they tried along with Will. Skelton, I still feel like he hasn't kind of hit the heights that he's done with La Rochelle, but he is improving at test level. But you still want to see that kind of, you know, either like a statement carry or like a big hit for him just to to show that he can actually have that that impact as well for the Wallabies. You know, looking for some kind of inspiration for what is, you know, a, a very kind of inexperienced side to be, you know, uh, to going to a World Cup, basically. Back row, then you got um, Tom Hooper there at six. So he's his brother missed out, but he's in. He's going to take his chance with both hands. Or Fraser McWright. Uh, you know, he looks decent at seven, but, you know, um, still, I think, like, the hooper brother combination would have, probably would have been better overall there for them. But, you know, he, he, he'll do a job for them, at least. Rob Valentini, I think, is maybe the most, one of the, certainly one of the most experienced, the most experienced in the back row, and possibly one of the most experienced in the whole team. So, you know, a lot of weight on his shoulders as well because he's not, you know, I think if, if they'd gone with kind of their established players, then he, he wouldn't have been seen as kind of one of the one of the experienced heads, I think, around the place. But, you know, he, he's looked decent at eight for them. Into halfback then, Tate McDermott seems to be the preferred choice at nine. Um, so... Expect him maybe to you know uh, to keep that spot through the World Cup unless you know um, they have a, a poor result or something and then it's it's who knows what's going to happen from there. Carter Gordon is the only specialist ten in the squad. He showed in the Rugby Championship like that you know he does have some you know um, some some decent skills about him. But also that, you know, there have been mistakes there in this game as well. But Eddie has decided that he's his guy and he's going to back him to the hilt. So fair play to, to him for that. I I was very surprised, though, that, you know, uh, Hooper wasn't included in the squad just to have a, a more experienced player there. Maybe not starting, but there just in the squad to help him come along. But, you know, Eddie Eddie's decided that Carter Gordon is the guy for him. Onto the um, left wing, then we've got Su- Suliasi Vunivalu. So, seen him a couple of times, haven't been all that impressed with him. I know that he's in convert from league about two or three seasons ago, but hasn't really, you know, uh, caught the eye really for the Wallabies yet. Then, centers, we've got L- Lalakai Fuketi and Jordan Pitaya. So, it was a decent combination. I would say that. France probably have the the better combination altogether. But these guys, if if Australia can maybe move, you know, the, um, the big bodies of France around the pitch a bit and just 
do do what they they try to do, which is keep the ball alive and and you know avoid as many you know look and cost contests at the breakdown as they can. Maybe these guys are going to find some space then, and, and both of them can exploit that. On the right wing, then we have Mark Nwakanito Ase. So you know he's been probably for me at least, uh, other than Karambete, the winger that that's looked most comfortable in in the Wallabies for me. Like he's decent defensively, he's very good in the air, and you know he can finish when he gets a chance as well. Fullback Andrew Kellaway, he seems to be nailed on to be the fullback, but with Eddie Jones, can we really say that anything is nailed on at this stage? Onto the bench, then you got uh, Matt Faisler, um, Blake Scoop, who is set to make his um, debut when he comes on. You got um, Zane Nonger. I thought Nonger was, you know, Faisler and Nonger, they're both kind of inexperienced, but they did okay uh, in the games that have seen them. You got Matt Phillips there covering the second row. Rob Liotta, you know, Decent again on the bench covering the back, the uh, back row. You got Langy Gleason. Can't really tell you much about him. Then got um, Isaac. Isaac finds uh, Lele Wasa again set to make his debut, and then Ben Donaldson in the twenty-three shirt. So talk about the first fifteen being inexperienced, but there's not much experience coming off the bench really into that team other than you know Rob Liotta. Um, you know, not many of them have been around for all that long in the Wallaby setup. So, in terms of then the last team or last time, sorry, these two uh, played each other. So it was last year in the in the autumn series, and it was uh, France thirty, Australia twenty nine. You know, pretty close game and that's kind of the way things have gone between these two teams over the last I think six meetings it, it's been like a one score game between them so if we go have a look at that so back in 2014 it was France 29 Australia 26 then 2016 France 23 Australia 25 2021 they had a uh, three-game series. First game was Australia 23, or yeah, Australia 23, France 21. Then Australia 26, France 28. Australia 20, 33, France 30. So Australia clinched that, but very tight margins again. And then it said it was, that was last year where we had one point in it. So, you know, history... Recent history is saying this is going to be a very close game, but I think that this is going to be, you know, a win for France by at least a couple of scores. I think I think Australia will have a period because we we see Australia being able to, you know, they have a period in the game where they can score a couple of tries in quick succession. But I think over the whole game, France are going to be good enough to be maybe a couple of scores ahead of them. And yeah, so I think that that's going to be the winning margin. And I'm back in France in this one.